Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Sir Vagabond in Japan. Um, we have already done the first two pages and we're going to move on today. This is a design project for Scrap and Create and you can get all your supplies there. There's a link down below to the cutting guide for this project and there is... I just drew a blank. A link to the supplies I guess is what I'm thinking. Anyway, okay, so um, we need a base page. This is from the patterns, and somehow I inexplicably cut it a little bit narrow, too narrow, but it's fine. I'm just going to center it and use it because it's the only one I have because it came from that patterns pad. And that's going to go there, and then we're just going to do a little triangle pocket here. And this is actually the back of this page. Like This is going to be the front, and this is the back. I'm doing this one first because it's easier. So here is our triangle. And if I am not mistaken, this was a five inch square cut in half, I believe. Yes, five inches cut in half. Um, goes like that. If you want yours bigger, just cut your square bigger and cut it in half. And then score the um, right angle sides and trim out the corners and tape it. And because of the angle, of this uh, here, you may need to do a little extra trimming. Just check it, and I feel like I need, need this side's fine, but this one I think I want to take a little bit more off. That's better. Okay, and that is going to go like that. And I might just go ahead and put this on. As far as the mat, I just cut a square that's a hair smaller than um, the finished. So in other words, this is four and a half. So I cut a four and three eighths square, cut it in half, and then you'll probably need to trim some off the diagonal. And I have already inked these using um, walnut stain. This is just going to go right down here. Now this is, do you know, a tube. So this is just going to go right down here. Make sure that's down the middle. Okay. And then this. I'm so mad at myself for cutting it too narrow, but I think it'll be fine. And yeah, it'll be alright. And this was the cover of the backgrounds. You know what? There might actually be another one in there because this was the cover. But that's alright. I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to use it. Let's do the other side. We have a lot of pieces for this other side, sort of. It's hard to describe this one. Okay. Let me set that aside. This is going to be the background. This is going to be the flaps. So it's pretty easy to do what I have here. So first off, we have two flaps that are going to be three and a half by eight, and they're going to go on either side. And we can just go ahead and do that. Now 
Now, if you want to hold this assembly together with a tie, you would put that on first, but I'm going to use magnets. It doesn't really matter top and bottom at this point. So that's just the basic page, okay? And we want, and they are, let me see. Whenever you have something that meets in the middle like this, they tend to overlap just slightly, not meet perfectly. Um, and I could trim so they meet perfectly, but honestly, I think it doesn't matter. So let me grab some magnets. And this is pretty tall. I'm wondering if I want to use four. Oh, I'll get four out. I may only use two, but I'll get four out. Actually, are there two there? No. Okay, this one doesn't want to come off. Let's try it from the other end. Okay, there we go. And I just want to separate these so they don't stick together. Okay. So if I do just one, yeah, I think I'm going to use four, just because this is so tall. If you can see that that's stuck down a little bit, the um, my mat is magnetic. Oh, you know what? If I'm going to do two on each, I'm going to need eight magnets. That's a lot of magnets. Oh well. You can just do one in the middle if you want. Oops, I didn't do that very well. Hang on. that again. Cool. And I get four more magnets. Just not doing very well with that. But that'll be enough. The mat will hold it down. Okay.
Okay. Now, that's the, so that's the top. This is the bottom. And I am going to use this piece, which I believe is from the 8x8. Eight eight. It might have been from the 12x12, 12 12, actually. No, I think that's the 8x8. Eight eight. Okay, so that is going to go there. And did I look like I inked that? Did I? Yeah, I did. Okay, so that's going to go there. Whoops. Put the dragon to the outside. I almost put the glue on the wrong side. to make sure I've got it reasonably centered. Okay. okay. And then these two pieces came from the patterns, that eight inch patterns. And I just cut this and then this one, you know, they, they're originally side by side. Okay. there's that. Now we have this. So let me set this aside for a moment. A few of these things. Okay. So for the next part, you're going to need a 12 by 12 sheet. Okay. And this is the one I chose. And what you want to do is measure down the ruler. Oops. And you want to measure down from the top on the right four inches and make a mark. Okay, and then you want to measure up from the opposite corner, the lower left, four inches and make a mark, and you want to cut between them. Okay, it's a little tricky because it doesn't quite fit in your cutter, but it works. And I just want to say, I saw Gail Augustinelli make this element. She's a junk drawer, just love her channel. And I'll link it down below. Anyway. So that's where I learned how to make it. She said that she'd seen lots of people make it. She didn't make it up, but that's where I saw it. So, all right. So now you have these two pieces. All right. And what you want to do, and I've already done it on this one, so let's set it aside, is get out your board. And I just want to double check. On the side. Okay. And I'm going to put this side up. And what you want to do is score these. Like when I scored this one, I scored it with the red side up. And I scored it at um, 3, 6, and 9. This one I'm putting the print side up. And I'm scoring it at 3, 6, and 9. Okay. That's that. I'm going to do that with both of them. You know, one on each side. Well, you can do it both the same if you want, but... Okay. And then I have inked already. So, 
So what I am going to do, let me think, you need to do these opposite. So you fold one over, fold back, and fold over, and you get this zigzaggy element. Okay. Okay, we're going to do something else with that in a minute. Okay. So then I need to do this the opposite. So this one, this one, and this one. So now we have these face in opposite directions. Whoops. And you see different parts of the paper. Okay. Like that. So these are going to go on these. Okay. Like that or like that, which doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. Okay. And one thing that you can do, I think I'm going to do mine like that, maybe, is we're going to glue these down, make little pockets. But you can leave this last one open and mat it if you want for writing or journaling or photo. So we may do that. I don't know. I'm still dithering over which one I want where. I might do it like that. Except it doesn't really matter. They look good either way. Um, we are going to need to add a little bit of a mat up here, but that's okay. We can do that. And I think I'll do that first though. Okay. So these I should be exactly the same width as the flap. So there's not really going to be much showing. Um, so I need a piece three by, I need two pieces that are three and that's going to be eight inches tall. Three by one and a half. Okay. So let me just see. I should so obviously there's nothing left over from that because we used the whole sheet. I have this. Is that one and a half? It's one and a quarter. Let me see if that's wide enough. If I put that there. And that there. Oh, it's not quite. I mean, it's, it's close though. It's most. I think that'll be alright. Okay, so I'm going to use this piece that I had left over. So I cut it from each end so that I would have those uh, strips on the side. Okay. And now, if I decide to leave this open and not mat it, thinking I'm probably going to need either a tie to keep both of them closed at once or more magnets. I have the magnets, but I kind of like the idea of leaving them open, so I think I'm going to. But in the meantime, let's glue them and then I can figure out where they're going. I'm going to use my fine tip glue bottles. These are available on Amazon. I'll have a link down below. And you know what I want to do is ink these. Because I inked the edges, but I didn't ink the folds. And you don't even have to glue these down if you don't want to. That's how I believe Gail was just going to tuck them in. I'm not sure. use too too much glue because these don't have any flanges or anything so the more glue that spreads out the less room you're going to have to put anything in these pockets which is fine we have plenty of places in the book to put stuff but I don't want to limit myself too much okay and then we're going to turn this one and we're going to put that there Oh, you know what though? If I 
If I use a magnet, I'm going to have to hide the magnet. Oh, that's all right, because I can hide it. I'm going to mat that. I can hide it under the mats. Okay, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay, let me do this one. Anyway, I have these bottles linked down below if you need a fine tip bottle. The icing bottles that I use, the bigger bottle, is um, great for matting, but not so much for fine work. And I'm just using our glitter glue. I just re-bottle it to make it easier to, to use. I don't really like the bottle tip that you can get for the art glitter glue bottle. You need to use a pin. I'm always losing the pin. It gets clogged. These get clogged too, but it seems like they're easier to handle. Okay, so now before I put these down, I really have to decide if I want to put these like this. Remember, they're not going to be black up there like that. Or like that. I think I like it like that with the points going up to the middle. Okay, so let me glue these down. And I want my. When you're working with black, it's handy to have a a light colored scrap to help you see. At least it's helpful for me to have a light colored scrap to help me see. Woo! I dropped that the wrong way. Okay. And remember, there is really no overhang. Uh, or, you know, it's it's the same size, so you're just going to match your edges. Okay, there we go. And the other one. does have text on it and I'm putting it down sideways but that's all right the text is pretty small there okay so there's those then I think before we put these down I want to map them and I am going to use craft I think that seems like the obvious choice so let me grab let's see so I'm going to need well, I'll figure it out. Hang on. All right. So I think the tallest that I'm going to want the mat to be would be five inches. So let me cut. It's probably going to take me two. So I'm going to cut two five-inch strips off of this. of each of these I'm making a, a bigger reveal than I would normally so I'm gonna make them two and a half so I'm gonna cut four pieces two and a half so you're gonna need four two and a half by five so one piece was sufficient I did not need two okay so I want to decide how much that is. Three eighths. I don't want to go up a half. This should be about a quarter. Okay, so we're going to need a quarter inch. I want a quarter inch reveal. So that means I need a half inch taken off the top. You'll see what I mean. 
So on this side, this piece is four inches. So this needs to be three and a half inches tall. Let me make a mark and be careful. I'm making this mark on the front, not the back. So there, three and a half inches tall on that side. And this side is five inches tall. So it needs to be four and a half inches tall. Right. So I am just going to go ahead and cut between those two marks on my trimmer. I'm going to need one opposite, so let me grab that. but the angle is off, so I've measured something wrong. I must have just measured wrong because it's just not as it should be. I just measured it wrong. I guess because it's not um, all the way to the edge. Let's see how that is. That is not perfect, but it's pretty good. It could have been a little bit taller there, but. So what I wanna do, because I need one opposite, is I am just gonna put it on here and draw my line. And I may leave it a little longer on that one edge. I'm not too concerned. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut along that line. And this one goes there. That looks good. Okay, so we have this one and we have this one. And now I have this one. Oh, I didn't cut it long enough. Hang on, did I measure? Apparently I did. Oh, it's six, not five, duh. Okay, so I need a piece well, I said five and a half, right? Is this five and a half? No, I cut it only five. Okay, let me cut two pieces, five and a half by two and a half. Okay, and I just knocked something over. Okay. Okay, and actually, an easier way to do this That's how I'm going to do it, is to put this down where I think I want it. I want it pretty even with that one, so about there. And then I'm just going to eyeball, and I think it will look even better than trying to measure it. Okay, let me do that. I am back, and so this is pieces that I have and then oops while I was getting those I got the um, the other two of these squares I think I'm just gonna go ahead and let's get those in so these are done I 
mind, I didn't put the top on that one. I keep thinking I have something there that I'm trying to push away, but I don't. This paper is just stunning. That finishes that one. All right, now let's get these out of the way. And, okay, now I don't have all the mats, but all the mats is not required for us to continue. Okay, so this, here's our base. This is six by eight and a half. it would be nice to have just some full pages for embellishing or photos or whatever. So this is going to be a full-size flap with I want, um, with room for whatever we want to do. All right so this is just going to go across the top. And I'm going to put this as the mat. It's going to go beside this one, and I think it will look nice.
Okay, and then we need two more full-sized mats. Here we go. I'm going to go to my... Do I want to go to the 12 by 12? Uh, we still have quite a few 8 by 8s, I think. That's very bold. I think I may save that for... Oh, and we could use that side. Okay, hang on. Maybe we'll use that side for one of them. Have all the patterns too. Could we use these? This one with the text. Maybe. I mean, the wave is beautiful too. This is pretty and it picks up on what we have on the outside. Okay, hang on. I like those, but that. we have that. Doesn't do anything, but that's kind of interesting. that but I don't have anything I like to use with it but I do quite like these two yeah, this one. okay let me cut these so on that way or that way I think that way okay Sure, I get these right side up. Japanese is read right to left, top to bottom, as I understand it. Okay, now the other side of this one, I don't want to put the mat down yet because I'm going to do a removable element. And I don't want to do that until I've got the element made. So I think we're close to a stopping point. But I think what I'm going to do real quick is put together my cover so that I can apply the rice paper and it can dry overnight. 
because I'm about finished for the day. So let me... All right, so that's going to be there. That looks really nice. And we have that and that and that and that. Awesome. Okay, let me real quick put my cover together. I have a video on how to do this. I'm using a contrasting spine cover. Um, I'm going to wrap the cover in black and the spine in craft. And I have a whole video telling you how to do that, um, which I will try to remember to link here. But it's in my Construction Basics playlist. You're looking for how to make a mini album cover with a contrasting spine. And the measurements are in the cutting guide. So I will be right back. cover. Now, I want to put the rice paper on before we stop for the day. And I need some plastic. And I need a brush. Okay, hang on one sec while I go and grab a brush.
That is so pretty. And let's see. Try to decide exactly how I want to place it. I'm not thinking much of it is going to show on the front. Okay, so what I am going to do is start on the back. And I'm going to put it just so it's a hair over the edge of the contrast spine. And I did the contrast spine just so that it would be um, light and the rice paper would show well. I don't know why I always put it on plastic. I know I'm going to end up just putting it on the cover itself. You can use any kind of a matte Mod Podge, matte medium, something like that. Um, I'm using uh, Stamperia Colavello, which is their um, rice paper glue. Make sure you leave plenty of space, top and bottom, for it to wrap. It looks good. It's not hundred. Well, yeah, it's pretty good actually. Okay. All right. Now I am going to wrap this up to the point um, where the spine bends. And then we're going to lift it up. You'll see. Okay, so I'm just going to go to that spot, add some more glue. Okay, and I want this to be bent when this wraps. Okay, just like that. here. And this front cover is going to be matted, so you really won't see too much of the rice paper on the front cover, but you will see it, of course, on the spine. Now, we want to take and wrap it to the inside, okay? And it's pretty long. You can trim some off if you want um, to reduce bulk, but it's also pretty thin, so I don't think it's going to cause too much problem if you don't trim it off. That said, I am not going to. if some of the glue um, you know goes off where it's visible because it dries clear plus you're going to be covering it oops Let's almost put that right down in the glue okay I 
just want to do this now so that um, it can dry for a long time. It's a little tacky um, for quite a while. And if you want, you can put the glue on the actual rice paper. Just another way to do it. Just um, make sure that you get some glue right along the edge of the cover where it's going to wrap. front, that is the side and the back, and then I am going to go through and just put some on the front of the paper, especially right along the edges. Again, it's going to dry clear, so don't worry if it looks cloudy. side. It is a matte. This is what I'm using. Um, it is matte, but it will leave a little bit of a shine. that. Alright, now I am going to let that dry and next time we will put our pages in the book and we'll make our, um, let's see a spot where I need more glue, um, you know we'll make that detachable element and I don't know what else we'll do but we'll make that element and we'll put our pages in the book next time. So I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. There is a link down below for the cutting guide for this project and a link to scrap and create where you can get all your supplies. And that is it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Feel free to click on any of the support the channel links that are down below or my Amazon list. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.